Welcome to another episode of the Amateur Machine Shop. In this video series, I cover the Mini Flame Eater Sterling Engine Build by John Ritter. For this video segment, three parts will be machined. The crank web, the crankshaft, and the crank shaft spacer. As you can see, the model engine was drawn in Fusion 360, but my hobby subscription has expired, and I have to create hand drawings for reference for the time being. Last year I built a camera crane but still have some minor video shake, likely due to the wood being a little flexible. Steel cables under tension may help. Let's get started. First a little machined area needs to be removed from the material I have. The crankshaft is easily made for this engine. A 5mm shaft is all that is required. Over the years I have disassembled many scanners and printers and saved the materials for use for later projects. First thing is to center drill the shaft. This will allow a tailstock to be used with a live center to hold the shaft when extended. Only a little material had to be removed. I used too sharp of a point on the cutter and didn't get a smooth finish. However, it isn't an issue as I will bring the shaft to its final size using emery cloth. Using a caliper to measure until close, I switched to a micrometer to get a more accurate measurement. It is a bit of back and forth between sanding and measuring. With these little lace, it's easy to lathe off a thousandths of an inch. Using emery cloth takes a while to remove material as a finer grid is used when so near to the final dimension. A thing to keep in mind when using emery cloth, sandpaper or grinding on a lathe is to either cover the lathe ways or wipe the ways before moving the carriage back and forth. You do not want grinding debris between the carriage and the ways. The shaft diameter is close to final size. On such a small diameter the difference between half a thou, tight or loose, is very noticeable. Machining the end will allow a lead-in for the bearing to slide on easier. Use caution when leaving a part piece that is far from the chuck. I'm only removing about two thousandths of an inch. Generally, a four to one ratio, that is diameter times four, is the maximum distance of the workpiece should be from the chuck. At this point, about one thousandths of an inch is needed to get the bearings to slide onto the shaft using 150 grit emery cloth and then switching to 320 grit. I'm finally happy with the fit, moving to the bandsaw to cut off the shaft. Facing and chamfering the shaft, the flat on the shaft will be added later upon assembly. Some final polishing and sanding with 320 grit emery cloth allows the bearing to slide on. I have purposely created a slight taper as I want the crank web to be a tight fit. A final machining to remove the center drill support hole, a chamfer and a slight sanding and that will conclude the crankshaft machining for now. Next part to be machined in this video segment is the crank web. Material is brass and consists of a 5mm bore by 3mm by 0.5 pitch threaded hole and milled area. Overall thickness is 4mm. I start the process by laying out the diameter which is 28mm. Adding a little material I then have the distance and determine the center point. Using an automatic center punch to create a point to use four dividers and scribing a 28 millimeter diameter on the material, mostly to ensure there's enough material all around to lathe two diameter. 
Next step is to cut off the scribe part. I made a point of sawing off all the corners to reduce the corners having to be lathes. For safety I should have used pliers to hold the material in the saw. An automatic center punch doesn't punch very deep. Using a punch and hammer to make the point deeper and easier for a drill bit to pick up on. The center point is now drilled through with the 3 16 drill bit allows for about 10 thousandths of an inch to be removed later in the lathe. I have a mandrel with a threaded end that fits a 3 16 hole. Using a few spacers from scrap, the crank web was fitted to the mandrel. It made more sense to place the crank web between the two spacers. Tighten the nut and ready for the lathe. The mandrel is placed in the lathe chuck along with the live center in the tail stock. Feeding in the tool bit, taking measurements along the way, doesn't take long to reach the 28 millimeter diameter. From here the part moves over to the mill using a 3 16 diameter shank to locate the center and move the part against the fixed vise jaw. After tightening the vise I check that the shank is centered and isn't hindered by moving the spindle up and down. Setting up and spot drilling with a center drill for the 3 mm tapped hole. A 3 mm by 0.5 pitch thread calls for a 2.5 mm drill bit to be used. When I worked in a tool and die shop years ago, the boss insisted we always double check the diameter of the drill bit to ensure there were no mistakes, something I still do on a regular basis. I have seen bump tools used many times and recently again on the click spring video. The tool actually really works well. I made the bump tool quickly for the crank web machining as I knew it would be a very handy tool to have. The crank web bore is now brought to 5mm diameter. I use the crankshaft as my gauge to check the fit along the way. Without any adjustment to the cross slide, the boring bar is fed through one more time and the crankshaft slides in with ease. The crank web part is turned around in the chuck, once again using the bump tool to straighten the part. I then face the part to its final size of 4mm. I should have laid out the lines much earlier, now I have to use a 2.5 and a 5mm drill along with calculating where the lines will be. Once I had the correct measurements established, the lines could be scribed. Using two sets of feeler gauges as that was the closest, easiest way to attain the correct distances. The lines for the web are about 20mm from the bottom of the 28mm diameter. Using a protractor set at 22 and a half degrees, I lined up the intersect of the two angles and scribed the lines on both sides. The distance across the web at the furthest points of the two angles is 20 millimeter. I verify this with the caliper and I am very close. Using a square to line up to one of the scribed lines to set the part vertical. 
At this point the one end can be machined. First I roughed most of the material away and followed it with a smaller new end mill for a better finish. Taking measurements in between to work to the final size of 7mm across. To mill the web angles, I set the parts in the vise, eyeballing the scribe line to the vise jaw to make the part parallel. The first side was a little too deep and the second side a little proud. At a later time I will finish all the surfaces. I should have tapped the hole sooner but was interrupted for the day. Setting the crank web in the vise, a 2.5mm drill bit is used to pick up the drilled hole. After this, I use a spring loaded tap guide to align the tapping handle end. A 3mm by 0.5 pitch tap is used. The final part in the segment is the crank web spacer. I wish I had caught this sooner as the spacer could have been integrated into the crank web itself, thus eliminating the need for two pieces and only making one part. I start the process with a piece of half inch brass rod, facing and drilling the center. This time I drilled a size under 3 16 using 11 64 to leave a little more material to bore the hole. Using a small boring bar, the bore is brought to size which for the spacer is 5mm diameter. Again, I'm using the crankshaft to gauge the diameter. Since this is a spacer, the fit can be loose. Next up, the outside diameter is brought to 10 millimeter. Off camera I cut off the spacer from the brass rod and made a mandrel to press fit the spacer onto it. I could have used a cut off tool in the lathe but I wanted to make sure that the thickness of the spacer would be accurate. A little polish, sanding and the part is removed from the mandrel. This concludes this segment. Be sure to watch for the next video in the mini flame eater engine build series. Thank you for watching.